A new study warns that global warming will kill 83 million people within the next 80 years. That's a grim number that translates to more than 1 million people per year. Joining us now to break down these numbers is R. Daniel Bressler, a PhD candidate at Columbia University, the man behind these numbers. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for being here. Uh, tell us about this climate change data and then really what causes a death are we talking about exactly? Are this, is this people dying from wildfires, heat strokes? Can you break that down for us? Yeah, so this study only quantifies excess mortality from temperature-related mortality. So this means essentially excess mortality from there being more hot days, which is bad for mortality, and fewer cold days, which is good for mortality. So this is the net result of that effect that's going to happen when the world continues warming. And my next question was actually going to be, is this in excess of kind of existing deaths? And, and by that, I mean, you know, we have X amount of deaths related to heart disease every year, X amount of deaths related to cancer and other issues every year. Will this be replacing some of that or is this in excess of that? This is in excess of that. Wow. So the counterfactual is a world in which there's not an increase uh, in temperatures. Now, I understand that this is not going to affect everyone everywhere the same way that this does break down by different countries can you break that down yeah so there's going to be a lot of uh heterogeneous or differential impacts in different parts of the world uh, so in places that tend to be hotter and tend to be poorer there's projected to be larger impacts in those countries and in places that tend to be richer and tend to be colder uh, the impacts in terms of temperature related mortality are projected to be smaller and what's the factor behind that? Is it relating to, you know, that country's carbon emissions rate? We have a chart up right now that shows Saudi Arabia at, at the top of the mortality cost of carbon and then the United States following it right underneath it. Is that related to these countries' respective carbon emissions rates? Uh, no, it's not about how much carbon they're emitting. It's about how changes uh, in atmospheric temperatures in different locations are going to affect different populations differently. So for, for example, if you're in a richer country, uh, you're gonna be more able to afford the types of investments and adaptations that are gonna reduce your vulnerability uh, to hotter temperatures. In particular, air conditioning is a very effective uh, means of reducing the effect of very hot days uh, mm -hmm. on mortality. But air conditioning uh, is expensive, especially for many parts of the world with much lower incomes. And the electricity that's required to keep uh, air conditioning running is also expensive. I wonder a bit of your thought process behind quantifying this particular data. Was it in part to, to, for a call to action to affect some sort of change? Obviously, that number, you know, 80 something million people dying as it relates to, to global warming. And again, this is an excess of already existing deaths at, at the current rate. Was it, was it related to a call to action to, to kind of really quantify this in a way that, that shows people how important this issue is? Yeah, so the kind of idea for this came out of a 2017 uh, National Academy of Sciences report. And so that report was about how can we improve the estimate for this really important number, which is called the social cost of carbon. And the social cost of carbon is a number that's used by the federal government uh, in cost benefit analysis. And the idea is that when carbon dioxide is burned, it produces this externality where you slightly increase the concentration of carbon dioxide, slightly increase temperatures around the world. And this creates damage in economics, we call this an externality, uh, to parties that are not involved uh, with that original transaction. So the purpose of the social cost of carbon is to quantify the value of that externality. But then uh, there's all types of different impacts that are included in that single number. So that includes the effect on mortality. It includes the effect on sea level rise. It includes the effect on agriculture and all the other impacts uh, that climate change is likely to have. So the National Academy of Sciences said that in order for this number to be more clear and more transparent, it's useful to break down those damages component by component. And then where, where uh, feasible, those numbers should be presented uh, both in terms of their monetized value, in terms of dollars, but also in terms of their natural or physical units. So, so in the case of mortality, the natural slash physical unit is indeed excess deaths. Gotcha. So I have to ask, you know, the idea of losing a million people a year because of global warming is pretty scary. Can this be reversed? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, at the beginning of the segment, you said, you know, 83 million excess deaths. That is in a higher emission scenario. So that is in a scenario in which we get to over four degrees Celsius by the end of the century. If we pursue a much uh, more aggressive global climate policy, for instance, decarbonizing by 2050, then the number of excess deaths would only be nine million. So this number isn't set in stone. It's very much going to be a function of what uh, we as a global, uh, in terms of globally reducing carbon emissions, end up doing. Well, that's a staggering difference from 83 million potentially down to 9 million. Let's hope that we get there. Thank you so much. Our Daniel Bressler, PhD candidate at Columbia University.